St. George Orthodox Church, a building in the downtown area of Orlando, Florida, and is directly across from Lake Eola, is a National Register of Historic Places, which is the United States federal government's official list of districts, sites, buildings, structures, and objects deemed worthy of preservation for their historical significance. It was originally built in 1926, it wasn't made into the church we know it as it is today until 1968, since it was originally the first Church of Christ scientist, which has since moved. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places on June 3rd, 1980, and is under the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America, which is the jurisdiction of the Greek Orthodox Church of Antioch in the United States and Canada. Originally under the care of the Russian Orthodox Church, the syro Leviathan Orthodox Christians immigrated to the United States and Canada, where they were granted their own jurisdiction under the Church of Antioch in the wake of the Bolsheviks' revolution. However, internal conflicts divided the Antiochian Orthodox faith into two parallel archdioceses, those of New York and Toledo until 1975 when Metropolitan Philip or Saliba became the sole Archbishop of the reunited Antiochian Archdiocese. St. George Orthodox Church and the presiding priest, Father John Hamadi, are still residing in the building to this day and it's considered to be a historical building with a historical background. Between the years of 1870 and 1920, over 25 million immigrants arrived to the United States for new opportunities they couldn't have in their own countries. During this time period, immigrants from Italy, Poland, Ireland, Germany, and Eastern European Jews arrived in large numbers, many of which have come for religious freedom. Many Jews, Catholics, and Christians came to the United States so they could find sanctuary and practice their religions in peace. I talk with Father John Hamadi, the priest of St. George Orthodox Church, about this. Of course, people came here for religious freedom. You know, I mean, the, the pilgrims, well, they, you know, we're going about the wild pilgrims. Pilgrims are basically a bunch of dissident uh, people from Holland that they, they told me to get out of Holland and they went to England and the English didn't want them either, so they wound up coming to America. America was, was founded really uh, originally more for religious freedom. Uh, this church, the Antiochian church, came to America, and all Orthodox churches, except for the Russians, came to America uh, on the backs of immigrants. They came here, they wanted to live in the United States, they had no church, so they would send back to whatever country they came from and ask them to send clergy. Well, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my wife is from Lebanon, and my children, I have five children, love, they were all born here. So, I mean, uh, like your parents, did my they My parents were born in America. My family uh, has been here for 125 years. My great, great grandparents came here with their children, and then my grandparents all met each other in New York. I was also able to speak with Subdeacon Charles Hill. Uh, many of the people did come to this country seeking religious freedom from Europe. And uh, a lot of that ancestors is in our blood. Of course, um, most of the people who came here weren't thinking about being ruthless invaders. Most of the people who came there were, were seeking some form of, um, of, of freedom, of religious freedom. So uh, many people were dissidents because, um, like the established religions in Europe, like the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church, those churches were very well established. And so those people didn't feel they needed to leave for religious persecution. And so the people who are more on the fringes of society who had stranger religious views of the people who came to this country. And in a way, maybe they were the more fervent people. And so you do see a stronger percentage of religious people in America today. And it's probably no doubt because our, our ancestors fought so much to preserve their individual beliefs. When it came to the westward migration, many Christians and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, more commonly known as Mormons, started to leave both the North and the South to seek more opportunities further west and along with it, more opportunities to spread the word of God and their religion, but also for the Mormons to flee from religious persecution for their seemingly unusual rituals and practices. As settlers continued west, they started to encounter Native Americans, which then led into conflicts. The settlers decided that the best way to deal with this was to go to war and eventually made the Native Americans reside in reservations to keep them at bay. This, however, did not stop the conflict between them. 
so Americans decided to make a peace policy so that both sides could reach an agreement and stop the fighting. Eventually, the whole American Indian policy was Christianized and much of the reservation system was handed over to Protestant churches, which were tasked with finding missionaries to manage reservation life. And so many Christian missionaries went out to try and integrate Native Americans into their religion. The Russians came here to evangelize America because as the Russian church kept going uh, eastward from the, you know, the original Russian, the European part of Russia, they kept uh, baptizing and converting the people. They got to the shores of the Pacific Ocean and there was, that was the end of Russia. They had land across the Bering Strait, which was Alaska. So they sent missionaries to Alaska. And then eventually they moved their uh, headquarters to San Francisco. And at that, before the Russian Revolution of 1917, all the Orthodox Christians in America, whether they were Greeks, Romanian, Bulgarian, Serbian, Syrians, and Negative, they were all under the authority of the Russian Orthodox Church because they had established that diocese here. Once the revolution came, then they subdivided administratively into those groups that uh, really were particular to their ethnic background. Greeks or Romanians spoke the same language, so that's what happened. So the Antiochians, as far as that, were more Middle Eastern. Okay? The difference in the Antiochian Orthodox uh, on a world scale, even in America, is the Antiochian Orthodox Church was always known for being very progressive. Okay? Uh, for example, the Orthodox Church has a, a tradition that you use the language of the country you go to. So when they went to Japan, they used Japanese, went to Korea, they used Korean, and so on and so forth. But when they came to America, because they were dealing with the ethnic people, they used the language of those people. The Antiochians said, we're in America, we have to use English. So when they were the first church to translate the services into English, and they've always been on the cusp of that, you know, that forward thinking. The Orthodox Church, as I said before, is based on Jewish temple worship. Okay. What they did, once the church was freed from Roman persecution, they took the, the temple worship, all right, and they Christianized it. How they Christianized it? Well, no more killing of animals because Jesus was the sacrifice, all right? Other than that, the, the Orthodox Church worship is basically what God called for in the book of Leviticus. Something called the Law of Discovery. And the Law of Discovery is still doctrine um, in the Catholic books. And uh, the Law of Discovery basically says the first Christian to claim a land is the person to own it. And so, of course, when our European ancestors came here, they found the Native American people, but the Native American people were not Christians. And so they were Christians, and they said, well, we claim this land. And Native Americans didn't really think anybody could own land because of the way they view about things. Um, but because uh, they then took the land with their military might, and the, the, we, when we fought our independence from Britain, um, they, Britain had claimed this country by discovery, and we caught it by, um, from Britain in war, by also by discovery. And so the way in which the our European settlers laid, laid fiscal claim to this land is by the doctrine of discovery, which unfortunately is a very big part of the Christian tradition and a big part of our American foundation. And so if we did not have this idea of discovery, um, we would have been just kind of like ruthless invaders who took this land from other people. Uh, maybe we were kind of like that anyway. The Orthodox Church and Christianity as a whole has been intertwined with America and its society since the beginning. As the years pass, Christianity has been a staple religion in the country, but has been slipping into the background, seemingly as though it has lost its presence. The St. George Orthodox Church still makes an impact in the Orlando community, like celebrating over 50 years of the Archdiocese being in Orlando in 2018. To quote Bishop Noonan in the article, Leaders from Different Faiths Gather in Praise, Harmony, by Jennifer Drow, sometimes it can be very problematic when it comes to issues of race, religion, or even culture. We want to show our community here in Orlando, we as religious leaders do pray together, do enjoy one another's company, and do uphold our people to the principles of what we're called to be. We are called to be merciful. We are called to be faithful. We are called to walk with justice and live with peace. And the church works hard to bring love and happiness to the community and spread the word of God and his teachings. Having the church in this much needed area helps those in need like the homeless. To quote from the article, Nativity Outreach to the Homeless, hosted by St. George in Orlando. The Antiochian Parish in Orlando has become, over the last six plus years, the downtown feeding, clothing, and toiletries distribution center for the very large homeless community in Orlando and Central Florida. 
Many of the homeless have found a spiritual and communal home in the Holy Orthodox Church at St. George's. Even though it seems that Christianity in St. George Orthodox Church is fading to the background, its values, which have similarities with American values, will still be standing tall and still hold its values and beliefs. Okay, New Orthodox Church is much more involved. We are reliving, it's very important, New Orthodox Church in liturgy, we are reliving the reality of the life of Christ. We're not just remembering, remembering it, we're living it.